Hello there, my name is Rhys, and in this video, I want to give a quick overview of Deer and the chart of account settings, especially when you're syncing with a platform like Xero. Now, I want to establish that I'm not an accountant, this is not accounting advice, but I want to go over a few of the functionalities here, how they use to kind of myth bust um, a bunch of misconceptions in regards to how certain things here work. So the first thing I want to talk about is the chart of accounts themselves, where they're found and how they're updated. So when you're syncing with Xero, you'll find your chart of accounts in your reference books area of the settings. This is then found in the financial area where you'll see two things of note, the chart of accounts option here and the account mapping. So if we look in your chart of accounts, what we'll see is all the available chart of accounts that have come from your integrated accounting platform. You'll see them broken down here by the type of accounts, and you can even view uh, accounts that have been archived. Now understand that even though you can load this from your integrated accounting platform right here, uh, every time you do a sync with that platform, it is looking and updating any available chart of accounts. So what we want to talk about is how did these, uh, how does this list of chart of accounts get applied to your deer and how does it work um, in tandem? Well, if we go back to your reference books, I pointed out the account mapping option found in the financial area. Here we are here. Now what the account mapping does is it uses that library of chart of accounts from your accounting platform and you're able to default where certain financial information is moved in accordance to that chart of accounts. Now, you can do some very bespoke uh, coding of these things, where you can even go down to certain products or certain customers and suppliers have unique mapping as it differs from these defaults. But in most setups, you're going to have this set and you won't need to worry about it from there. So the first thing is you have an inventory control account, pretty much where all the uh, all the value of the inventory you currently have in your uh, dear account is held. You then have an inventory discrepancy account. This is where you can push certain kind of fluctuations, expense write-offs, etc., of uh, of some of your inventory movements. Noting that this is just a default, there are many great reasons why you might um, put certain discrepancy uh, write-offs or adjustments to other accounts. Your cost of goods sold is an expense account of which you're tracking the value or the cost um, of the inventory as it's sold. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. You then have your default revenue account where all the, the value of what you're charging for these items goes. Your tax liability account is essentially where you'll put any of your uh, tax in, in Australia, it's GST or VAT in the UK, etc., and where that is held in your chart of accounts. And then you have your deposits, uh, supply deposits, and your customer uh, credit accounts. Uh, your credit, for instance, could be something like a liability account. Um, yes, <laughs> I had I questioned myself for a second then. And then you have, if you're using gift cards, you have a gift card liability account as well. So the core things I want to talk about is the flow of finances as they actually, as costs and revenue is moved around uh, in Deer. So understand when you raise a purchase order, the cost of those items, the inventory items, goes from that purchase order and into your inventory account. It's being held there as an asset. It's not yet an expense. When you eventually create a sales order, there's two exit points of that, that value. The first one is as soon as you invoice for those items, it goes out into a revenue account. So let's say, for instance, we have an item we purchase, it's $10. We then sell it for $20. $10 goes into our inventory account upon, it's being, upon it being received, and $20 goes towards our revenue account. Only upon the, the point it is, is shipped does the cost of that $10 go to your cost of goods sold account. Because that's the point of which the expense is appropriately mapped. So understand that if there is a big variance between the dates you're invoicing goods and the dates you're shipping goods, you can have a scenario where you're generating all your revenue in maybe one week or one month but don't actually accrue the expense, the cost of goods sold, until another month. 
And be aware of that when you're looking at your reports. So those are the, that's the general breakdown of the account mapping by default. Understand that if we go into any one of your products, and this is a demo environment, so please be aware that uh, the accounts that you saw mapped in that example are not necessarily ideal. So if we go to a product here, I'm just going to choose one here. Note that you'll have the ability to select unique inventory accounts, revenue accounts, and cost of goods sold accounts on a product by product level. Now this is used if you want to actually map uh, certain product ranges towards certain revenue accounts and keep that money separate in regards to your chart of accounts in Xero, your integrated accounting platform. Now, in older systems, this is pretty much a requirement if you get transparency of kind of what's making you money. But we tend to advise it's not necessarily the best thing to do in Deer. There are reasons why you'd want to do this, but if it's just to separate that revenue, that value, um, the cost of goods sold value, understand that you have things such as categories, you have tags, you have many other ways of separating in reporting uh, right here in Deer to know the differences between uh, different ranges of your products and kind of what their revenue and cost of goods currently is at. And one of the risks here with actually using these is down to just process handling. These fields, because they are uh, not required, means that if someone is creating a product, they must know your exact accounts every time the product is created to map them accordingly. Because there is a risk that if these are actually mapped, where let's say this is um, a beer product, let's say this was mapped to a beer inventory account, a beer revenue account, but the cost of goods was accidentally put towards a cider account or wine, then what's going to happen is you're never going to get your books to match at the end of the day. It's putting these things um, in the wrong place. So there's a consistency that's required for doing this kind of uh, bespoke mapping. And there's definitely reasons why you would want to do this, but as a general rule, you want to avoid it wherever possible. You also have the ability of pre-assigning um, um, tax rules, of course, to products, um, but that doesn't actually impact exactly the chart of accounts in the same way we're discussing today. The other thing to be aware of is on a customer um, basis, you can also adjust certain uh, mappings on a customer and supplier basis. So if I'm to open up an example customer here, you'll notice here that I have the ability of mapping a unique accounts receivable or sales account purely for a single customer. So of course, seek um, your accountant's advice if you have ideas or desires of actually mapping suppliers and customers to unique accounts, um, but you do have the capability to do so here. Now, of course, when you're producing a purchase order, when you're producing a sales order, you also have the ability to uh, adjust these levels on a line by line basis as well. Um, but of course, having your defaults and your standard account mapping, as well as any unique mapping against products, suppliers and customers means that you don't have to micromanage that on an order by order basis. Hopefully this breakdown of chart of accounts and the, and the syncing functions and the mapping functions within Deer makes a lot of sense to you. If you have further questions, let us know.